Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Can We Talk Conversations with Zay and Chris. It's Zay here. This week's topic is going to be all about the money and work. Money, 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 money. Working has become just, it's a privilege and we do know that because there's some people who definitely are less fortunate. Mm-hmm. But definitely right now, like, you remember how you guys we were talking about the housing market and how horrible it was, the interest rates, like everything. Now it has full-fledged. And we already, I think we precursored this in one of the first Can We Talks. But the job market is horrible. Mm. And we have very two different careers, two very different careers. It's horrible for both of us. Like, yeah. it's bottom of the barrel. And we will start with the first topic, which is... Yep, we're going to start with the first topic, which is um, LinkedIn is like a, I've been wanting to address this for a while. LinkedIn is definitely turning more into a social media site now. I remember coming out of college, um, even when I was in college, it was like, that was the go-to. That was the place to go. If you wanted to get a job, that's where you initially put your resume on to. And from, from, I'm telling you, like from the moment I've graduated to now, I have seen more tips and tricks of how to maneuver LinkedIn, what do you need to put on there, and here's how you manipulate the system. I even saw a video just a couple days ago of a dude who's a recruiter and he showed you exactly what happens when you do your LinkedIn, um, when you do your LinkedIn application. Did you know this, that the moment, the moment it is, when, once you apply for something, it is automatically filtered based off of not just preference, but it is like a likeness system mm-hmm. to the job immediately. Yeah. Like so, you could have the best resume in the world, but I'm telling you, if you're trying to apply for, let's just say software engineer, if you don't have software or engineer anywhere on the resume at all, even if you got a degree in software engineering, like it's probably going to be at the bottom of the pile. And that's just by applying as it is. And like, we all know that you have to do everything you can to stick out with applications. But the the fact that the site itself has become more of a social media site, like I, I don't even like even logging into it now. It is straight up just... I see less opportunities than I do people just people talking about random topics that have nothing really to do with working. I'll still see people posting about their food. Here's yeah. what I had to lunch today. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what, what? This is LinkedIn. Or this is what we got catered today this at work. This is what work. we got catered today yeah. at work. And I'm like, what do we, what do we, and I would have put, I would understand if it's like a sponsorship, but as a little bit, like if you're catered by, um, Canes, you know, and then you're like, this is sponsored by Canes. Okay, whatever. We know you get the bag for that. But, I just see people randomly putting the most random stuff on there. Like on Instagram, if you're saying that you lost your job and then you want to make a video about why you're struggling to find it. Okay. That's Instagram. Okay. You put it on Twitter. TikTok is definitely where people do that. I see a bunch of people, but why are we putting that LinkedIn? Isn't that supposed to be the professional I just feel like with my experience, like whenever I apply through LinkedIn, one, never hear back from any of those people. (laughs) I just never do. Not even no's. I don't hear yeses. Now, granted, sometimes I might hear, I, I might get a phone call a little bit later on. But in terms of LinkedIn, it's like they try to make it seem as though they're helping you. And first of all, I already knew it was going far downhill because whenever they started having LinkedIn premium. Mm. So that's where you can message people back now. Mm. And that's how you can get your application seen more. That is such a joke to me. Cause I'm like, do you want someone to work for your company or not? You want me to pay to have my application seen from you guys? Is that really how it is now? But everything now is such an ad. I don't get to talk to the recruiters. I have to pay extra money to talk to the recruiters. They'll be like, oh, try this free trial to like speak with someone you want to. It's just like, I don't even hear anything from them. People are not on there. People do not update things on there. But some people, it's like, it's kind of like how Facebook is. Like some people are still on there actively updating every single time they get a new job, trying to do that. And maybe that's kind of where they hold all their like, you know, um, resumes and their experience. Mm-hmm. So I understand that. But then some people do not, I'm, I'm like a ghost. Like you, I was only on there when I first graduated and that was it. Cause like I said, people, other recruiters reach out to me via email. And then there's so many scams. As we've addressed before, um, going back to the premium thing, mm-hmm. how come, here's what I really don't understand. When someone's viewing my profile, let's just say I want to, let's just say somebody, an executive or someone mm-hmm. views my profile because they see me pop up. How come I have to pay money to to see see who who that was? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. I'm, aren't you supposed to be helping me get a role? Yeah. I don't understand it now. 
I get, but no. I okay, but it's also like okay, you're a social media site. LinkedIn, you make so much money just from companies paying money to be on your site. Yeah. Why do I have to pay money for someone who maybe is in the industry that I want to get into? Mm -hmm. They view my profile. And yes, you can still message me. That's another thing. With with the scam things, how many times I get a random message about from a random job that I had no interest in? I had I had no my my profile has nothing to do with this job market, but you randomly reach out to me for that. Colleges randomly. I mean, I'm scrolling. I was scrolling through it just a couple seconds ago. We saw somebody's damn cupcakes, like and and what they had at the party celebration on here. I'm I'm supposed to be seeing how do I get a role and how do I get better in the working it's world. It's not a professional website anymore. It's not a professional website anymore, and it's like. I just like it's supposed to be boring. It's supposed to be boring and to the point, people. Yeah. Like when I'm on ZipRecruiter, I'm on ZipRecruiter, and I actually mess with how it is because it's like it's just it's just blank pages and jobs and applications, and they tell you how much the money is up front, which is also a scam. It's also a scam. guys. Yeah. I have a quick side story. This is, brings back trauma. Oh my gosh, there was a, uh -oh, trauma. Alan. There was a specialty that I wanted to go into in my career. And so this lady I had met, it was like at my college or whatever. They had like, you know, those, those like job fair type things. Mm -hmm. So um, she came. She was real, of course, very nice up front. You know, I told her what specialty she like. Obviously, she was actually the recruiter for that specialty. So I'm like, I hit the like I hit the damn jackpot told her like told her where I was she obviously was already at my school obviously she knew I was like if I would be a new grad in the specialty I would be in and so she was like oh yeah guys hyping this has happened to me so many times this is why I do not trust people at all she literally was hyping me up and she was literally just like yes yeah, send me your resume I already had it printed out she goes perfect I'm gonna give it to the recruiters um like to the other recruiters or like to the hiring um the hiring managers i'll let them know and like and plus guys also the jackpot because i went to a school that was not even um i went to i went where i went to school is not where i lived so that's not where i had been moving back to i literally she literally worked where i was moving back to too so like i said guys hit the jackpot all three the specialty i wanted the job like literally the um place i wanted to be at and she's like literally going she is in the main area that i wanted to be working at so I send her all that and then so what I do so you know I always follow up with people so when I was trying to actively look for a job I literally reached out to her again I was like hi you know we spoke at okay we spoke at you know x y and z you know I hope you remember me I'm, I'm looking forward to like hearing back from you or like have you heard anything from the hiring managers mm -hmm. ghost then after that I was like okay maybe I'll hit her back I was like at this point I have to worry about something else you know like because it was very grueling what I had to do in school and it's very um tough I'll say that and then so finally get back home and then so I reached out to her again and I actually had um sent her something and I also applied because I even sent her my application ID things like that told her my GPA all all those things literally never heard from that woman again but then guys this, this is where it all links in get it <laughs> She literally followed me on LinkedIn and still didn't say a damn thing no, to me. No, that's crazy. I said, no. I'm I'm just so used to being disrespected. No, that's I'm crazy. I'm just like, what? I'm like, so you literally see me messaging you. you. You see me emailing you. I handed you my resume and then you don't say anything to me. And then you literally follow me on LinkedIn and still don't say a damn thing to me. I said, at this point... I can't rely on you anymore. I, I'm not going to beg and plead anymore. You're clearly not trying to help me. And like I said, it's always people who are like, oh, yes, we're so excited. We need new grads. I can, and we need this on like where, like where I was working and I'm just, or where I wanted to work at the time. And then you guys literally don't like, they will hype you up to no end. Like that has happened to me. And so, cause I'm actively in the job market too right now. And there's so many freaking people that have done that to me. Oh, you're a perfect fit for this. People reach out to me and ask me for interviews. Mm. Never hear from them again. Like literally we'll be like, oh yeah, we're going to send this over. And then like one, even last week, guys, I literally had to track down a lady who was literally, who reached out to me. I didn't even apply for this position. She reached out to me and said, I want to talk to you in regards to this position. We would really like to have someone like you. And then literally didn't, she, we talked on Monday then literally I messaged her on Friday asking, hey, like, you know, did you hear anything back? Are we going to be moving forward? Oh, no, they're, they're pursuing other people at this time. 
why would you reach out to me? I, like I said, guys, didn't apply for this. You reached out to me, found my resume, all for you to be like, oh yeah, you're not really a good candidate. It's just like, what, what? the heck is going on? I'm just, that's why I'm like, at this point, I'm like, I don't know if I'm secretly blackballed or if maybe it's, you know, I'm a melanin warrior. I, I have no clue. Like, I have no clue at all what it is. Because I'm like, people are reaching out to me and like literally reach out to me, say you're perfect, and then go ghost. And I'm just like, okay. That's so weird. Um, it, almost gives, it almost gives me a feeling of like, they just reached out to you because they had, you know, like you were on the quota. Like, oh, yeah. I had to reach out. Like, I, I had have to, to reach out, out to be you. diverse. I have real to. Quick. Well, I have to reach out. Even just people, it's probably like they're told by the manager, hey, we need you to reach out to 200 people this week at least. Or mm -hmm. you need to reach out to 50 a day. And you need to make sure that they respond. And then you need to make sure you respond to them. It kind of reminds me of like when we were in college and we had to, um, this is definitely going to trigger some people. Like, you had to apply on the discussion post. Do you remember mm -hmm. that? How yeah, you yeah. have to. Like, you can't get a grade unless you apply on the discussion post i feel like that's and what they if do you didn't it. you're getting a 50 <laughs> and I feel already like you're getting do. a 50 i feel like that's what the recruiters do they're like oh um you're perfect for this role please message us oh they message back oh great i'll have to message them ever again but i'm gonna get my paycheck it's like it's also it's bs to, like that also to me it's just like what is the purpose of you guys jobs like i, I, I understand what Ooh, i you mean I, recruiters you know actual an actual credible recruiter i understand your position mm -hmm. i understand because some of my friends are recruiters I understand that part, but in terms of like, I know there's a filtration system and whenever you apply for things. So if certain things aren't even checked off, you're already not going to be picked. We understand that part, but the ones that are picked and then like, I just want to know, and guys, this is what kills me. I hate this on applications. I don't know. It's so controversial to me in terms of why they even have it on there knowing that they say so the non-discrimination act we're not going to do that we're not going to hold you accountable for whether your gender identity your citizenship or even your um right like race or ethnicity but then you constantly ask me and then also the veteran thing too are you a are you a protected veteran or not mm -hmm. it's just to me it's okay well if you're not going to discriminate me against any of the of these things why do i have to put them exactly that's why i'm just like like i said it's all to like i said it's just all a big i feel like just um not conspiracy theory but it's just to me a big theory <laughs> in terms of like how they filter people out it's like oh well we hired maybe five african americans we need to hire six caucasians and then maybe seven hispanics and then maybe someone who's biracial so we have that to me it's just like at the end of the day look at me as face value look at me as how do i speak how do i communicate am i timely with my responses also my resume what's my experience like do i have any customer service you know um etiquette you know look at it like that why like i said you always say oh and then even when you and like i already know like if you put prefer not to answer they're not going to pick you like i'm pretty sure it's like prefer not to answer and probably two set races that they're just like yeah we don't need to hire them at this point yeah. now granted it can always change so they probably never get caught with it but that's why that's why when i first originally had said what is the purpose sometimes of recruiters because i'm like you guys go in and like you're filtered these certain um applications that you're supposed to see but i'm just like once again why is that even on the application yeah and now there's so many applications where it's like all they do it's not even a real application it's literally just saying that they're on the um they're on um this certain website or for this certain company they literally just sell your information that's all they do yeah. that's why i don't like zip recruiter sometimes because they do sell like every but it's not just zip recruiter it's other people too yeah. they just sell your information they're like oh you're you're this so like okay here's all these positions and then like you'll literally even sometimes entertain some of them and then they'll be like oh well are you willing to relocate to like across the country exactly. and it's just like no like do you even like i said do you guys even look at the resume do you guys know who i am do you guys even know like what my position is like it's like i said there's just so much scamming out right now to where it's like it almost makes you not even want to apply but it's like you kind of have to because you need to obviously maintain your lifestyle and i feel like yep. no one feels safe in their jobs at all right now everyone feels like oh i can be like like uh, multiple of my friends are just like i don't even know like when i go in if i'm gonna be let go that day if i'm gonna be let go next week am i gonna get and then plus you guys all know we have to give two weeks notice but they don't give us a notice at all if they want to let us go exactly so yeah why, why do i want to spend all day 
on a job hunting website? Why are you promoting so much? Why are you presenting yourself in a way where it is like mirroring a Twitter or an Instagram to where I want to scroll through LinkedIn? I'm not trying to. I'm, not, I'm so sorry to curse. I'm not trying to fucking scroll through LinkedIn all day, okay? I'm trying to get on there. I'm trying to apply, and I'm trying to move on. Now, is it going to be a site that has a bank of all of my job applications and, and my work history and things like that? Yeah, because, you know, putting that on a piece of paper, you can lose that easily and whatnot. But it's good to have a – that's the kind of digital footprint I don't mind having. You know where I work. You know if I was a great employee there. You know my skills. You know that I've g grown and added on skills. But why on earth am I on the homepage and I'm seeing, and I'm seeing people promoting stuff like it's Instagram? Look, congratulations on you getting your new job. Um, why do I have to see five or six, seven photos of it like it's a photo shoot or something? Like what? Like you had a new job? They said Congrats, they're gonna. On. I'm gonna link you in. Duh. Come. <laughs> I'm like congrats move on and if you are gonna do something like that put on instagram don't put it on linkedin because when you put it on linkedin what is it who is this for that's yeah. the question who is this for let's just say you got a job at google congrats you got a job at google me personally i'd be post i would well me personally i wouldn't post that shit at all i just i just end up working but let's just say i wanted to post it it'd go on like instagram i wouldn't put it on linkedin as congrats i got a job at google and whatnot no you would just see the little um the thing that linkedin does when you update your job information um, Zay has gotten a new job at Google. That's it. And it has its own little automated kind of little uh, picture with a little emoji of a uh, party popper or whatever. Yeah. But it's like, you know, and I just say this because I've seen because I've seen people close to me, family members struggle applying. You know, like when I see stories of like, oh, I, I applied to 500 and 600 jobs over the last, you know, few months, eight months, 10 months, a year, and I'm just now getting it. That's not normal. This yeah, shouldn't that's be no good. this should that's that's an issue. That's a huge issue. And this is just like the every average day working person. Think about the people who don't even have their GEDs. Think or about like the degree. Yeah, don't, don't, don't have, have a degree. degree at all. Imagine the experience then. You know, oh, I was working at McDonald's for like a couple of months and now I want to work in another job. I'm not saying you just get a job as, as an executive, no. But I'm saying is, why do we have, why is the most well-known job hunting site mirroring social media sites? It shouldn't. It should be boring, it should be bland, and it should be straight to the point. I don't even need a damn profile. Why do I need a profile picture for it? You know, yeah. why so do I so need they can one? See. Why so do I then, need one at all? The reason why is because it goes back to what I said. Heat in my bag it's it goes back to what i had said in terms of the whole divert like the discrimination act the non -dis non disclosure non discrimination act it's literally because some people will lie like granted and i understand why because some people will put um because we've already seen like people actively doing it on tiktok i put uh, for the longest time i've been putting that i'm caucasian even though they're not or i'm hispanic but i'm putting something else you yeah. know like so many of us do that and we'll do it and then we'll get we'll hear back though that's the sad part we'll yeah. hear back when we're not what we actually are but then guess what linkedin is probably kind of um like no we need a profile picture of you so if you say that on these applications that you're that you're caucasian for example and you're really not and i go and i see you know melanin oh we're gonna go ahead and like disregard you and then definitely and then it's easy for them to do that because then they can be like oh we had a recruiter look at your digital footprint and then you lied on an application exactly so it just it just like i said it's just so it's honestly ass backwards honestly i'm just gonna give a quick shout out to indeed and how they kind of and how they look when i get on indeed yeah. it is bland it is a white screen it has the jobs I don't need a profile picture. My resume's on there. I apply and I move on. That's mm -hmm. it. That's it. That's how job hunting sites need to be. But why is why is it in a database that's like a Facebook? Like it doesn't need, that's what Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, all that's for. Congratulate yourself on there. On LinkedIn, I'm just trying to get a job. That's it. And why am I struggling so much to get into an interview why are there three rounds of interviews why yeah. do, that doesn't make any sense what are you doing like why why do i get in an interview in a zoom meeting with six seven other people how come i'm in a zoom interview first round with people there's six other people in there the recruit the, the person who's conducting it you're late how come you're late by five minutes mm -hmm. what the hell 
what's going on? But then when I get in there, guess what? I'm wearing something nice up top. You know, I'm gonna wear like a dress shirt or I'm gonna wear a nice, I'm gonna I'm look nice up top. And then how come I see other people and I'm telling you, they got the damn, they're interviewing off of their phone in their car in their cup holder. I'm not joking you. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding you. Now, if your day's busy and you only got that 30 minutes, I understand. Put a little bit more effort in to do that, to look a little bit more professional. Not to look like a certain color or a certain ways. Look more professional because yeah. you care about the job. Even though, let's just be honest, we care about that paycheck. That's really what yeah, it's about. Exactly. But and then why are we in this six room interview and then you're just asking us questions like it's the first damn day of school yeah. hey give me a special fact about yourself no tell me when does it start tell me what i need to do to get this role and tell me how much money i'm actually going to be making net not gross and let's honestly, cut the bullshit and get straight to where we need to do sorry for cutting I, you off. I no, no, you're good. i've noticed now too a lot of people that are doing these jobs do not ever tell you what they're looking for whenever i first was in this job market um for my career they would always say what we're looking for for x y and z um which is the company x y and z is the company is a person who is this or do you align with those now granted i understand a little bit as to why they don't do that now because you're telling everyone what you want mm -hmm. and that's easy for me to be like yeah i'm all those things you know um, but what I will say is in terms of the application for me and my career, like kind of, um, basis, I always have to do guys at least three interviews. And I hate that because I'm giving you so much time, whether it's me still working at the old job or me, cause honestly, I'm still, and that's another thing too. They don't really realize that whenever I'm doing interviews, I probably still am on another job. Like mm -hmm. most of the time you have another job and I'm interviewing for a new space. So I have to take time away from that role to do these things. So if you're trying to hold me over for two weeks to do three separate interviews, that to me is very, very, um, what's the best word for it? Um, I think it's cruel. I honestly do. I think it's cruel, but that's probably not the best word for it. Unnecessarily but I, time consuming. It's just, to me, it's like at the end of the day, I feel like there should just be two that you mm -hmm. should, you should have a recruiter reach out to me, say, Hey, this is the role. This is the pay period. This mm -hmm. is what we're looking. This is what we're looking for. Have it like the little phone screen interview where it's just like, are you even a right candidate for this? Are you even interested in this? Have it like that. And then after that, I should be in a zoom interview, which granted to me, all interviews don't need to be in person to me. They really don't. Oh my Cause God. you'll see Preach me louder. They do not. Cause you, person. you don't like, you can see me, you can see, um, and you don't need to see my house either, but you can see how I do them. Mm -hmm. Am I in a car? Do I have something on my head? Do I look presentable? You can see all of that. So to me, it's just like, after that, it should be asking me questions about, you know, my career field. And then also, you know, tell me, and I hate when they ask you that too. It's like, tell me a little bit about yourself, but I understand why. Cause it's like, let's see if your dynamic is good with the people you'll be working around. But it's also like, to me, it's like, like, like you said, it does remind me of school. Like, tell me about yourself. I'm going to tell you all the good things. You're not going to know maybe some, like, because in my career field, there's a bunch of people who will sell themselves. They can sell themselves very well. But when they get on, on wherever they're working, it's not like that. They're late. Um, they, like, and that's what I'm saying, too. I'm like, especially in my field, I'm like, you should probably give, if you have the degree I have, you should probably be giving everyone a chance. Sorry to say that sounds probably very lenient. But if you're, if you have your license and it's under good measure and you haven't gotten in any trouble and you haven't been let go from anywhere that you've worked to me you should be giving everyone week trials like have them come in 312s 410s 58s whatever it is mm -hmm. and see how they conduct themselves see how they give things out how they interact with the people yeah. on the like the interact with people mm -hmm. to me it's kind of like that to me is an interview we're seeing are you able to accomplish these things are you a right fit you ask like i said we all know in interviews you're selling yourself to exactly. them exactly so i can lie we can lie all day exactly. and i can lie for two weeks two months exactly. however but it's just to me it's like it's just now it's just super it's super time consuming to be doing stuff you're selling my information everything is a freaking spam and literally was a, a actual place that has hired me i worked for them and i was upgraded to a full-time employee from that website or like from that um recruiting agency literally um literally someone texted me all types of typos not a credible number nothing mm -hmm. didn't email me anything 
they were like, hey, looking looking for a job in X, Y, and Z, like my field. And then they're like, I work for this. I said, I automatically, I'm like, you guys have, I don't know where you're getting this information from, but you guys have completely lost it. Yeah. I have literally worked for this company already. I know who the people are that still work there. <laughs> and you're trying to text me, not, guys, no type of, hi, hello, no signature, no like credentials. Just literally like a, a regular text that you'd send to a friend saying, hey, are you interested in X, Y, and Z? This is how the pay is. I'm just like scammers. Desperate. What are you doing? Actually, I think I just got a text like that. I'm not even, I'm not even gonna hold you. Hold on, you hear this just, time. I'm almost sure I just. It's got just a text so like dumb. I'm just like scammers. You don't even know how to scam correctly now. I'm like, you guys are literally picking on anybody. Yeah, you just got a text like this, literally. Like, I have no idea who you are. Yeah, can I send, they, this is their code. Can I send you all the information and salary? And then you're a blocked number. You come up as spam. If you, if you have my number, okay, first of all, how the hell do you not already have my email? Like, exactly, what? and that's why, I'll, and that's the best thing. Guys, if, you, if you're if you like, I need to get any chance I can get, tell them, send me all the information to my email, email. with your credentials and your signature on it. Bingo. They will never do and you it. Better, and you better have, <laughs> Don't the, worry. You better have the website in there. They'll never do it. And like, it's so, and then guys, this was even funnier. With this same person, I said, you are not actually accredited. Please do not contact me anymore. And they literally go, are you, they, guys, they still kept going. They're like, they're like, are you sure? Cause we can really, I'm just like, are you kidding me? And that's why I'd be saying, I feel like LinkedIn, now I don't know about Indeed necessarily, but LinkedIn be selling our information. Oh, for sure. For sure. Like it just, they never stop. And then plus for me, I don't have social media. So only time you're getting this information is from my resumes yeah. and like from me applying for things. So to me, I'm just like, like I said, the application process now, it's too long, it's too tedious. Yep. Then also guys, how many of us have a job where we're overworked and don't get paid enough? Exactly. Oh, I'm pretty sure every single American has is raising their hands if they're not a billionaire or millionaire because jobs now change your, this is so illegal, but there's nothing, it just sucks because there's nothing you can do about it. There's so many places now that change your job description forcefully and actually forcefully and secretively make you sign something that they're gonna put on that new job description. Be like, oh, well you signed up for it. This is like, and then guys, they'll gaslight you into, into the sun. They will gaslight you because they're literally like, I remember one of my roles had drastically changed. They just literally plopped us on a new title and said, oh, okay. And then we're like, hey, and I literally had said very professionally, hey, I would like a new job description of mm -hmm. what is um, that, that what you guys need from me. Never gave it to me. They said, oh, well, when you signed up, you know, no, I signed up for a completely different role than what you guys are doing now. So legally, you guys need to provide me with the new job description for what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. They never will they don't pay like like i said and then the raises love love getting like two cents extra now granted i'm always going to be grateful for that because some people don't get any or they just get let go but i'm just like you and then they but gr granted for that two cents extra i'm doing 20 extra tasks that's ridiculous that's and wild. that's happening all over my friends are all different types of the same career field and different no one is getting paid what they are owed. And then you have to work so much to even feel like you can maintain your lifestyle now because of this inflation. I'm just like, what well, I'm like, it's like, um, one of my friends, they have two jobs right now. And it's because they're like, I really love having these two jobs. It's a great position to be in, but they have no life. They only have two days off in the week. Oof. And then it's literally like two. And I actually know they only have one full day off of work. They only have one actual full That's day off living. of work. That's not really living life. But. That's what I'm saying. And then yeah. like, and but then it's like you like that lifestyle because it's like, okay, I have the money. If anything goes wrong with one of them, I have the other one to fall back on. Yeah. But it just sucks because then it's like, okay, well now it's like, it goes into one of the other topics where it's like working multiple jobs. It it does suck and it is so bad and they always have this little conflict of interest if you work for two of the same type of companies and all these other things, which is fine, whatever, like, you know, cause it's different for each career field. But it's also like, do you guys expect me to live off this two cents extra when things are six to $7 higher? You know, it's like, it's like, at it's this like point- It's like get with the program. It's like, it's honestly, it's, it's just a slap in the face for the average hardworking 
person to think to themselves, I'm not secure with the one role that I have. Yeah. So I'm going to feel more secure with anything that happens if I have two of them. That just shouldn't make any sense. You should feel secure with the one role that you are actually working. Because of course I'm gonna show up to work, I'm gonna do my job, but then you wonder why people don't go above and beyond and do mm -hmm. a little bit extra and show up to some company event so they won't wanna give it, because because we're here to just work, get our check, and that's it. I'm not, so like, hey, for me to just Hey, but they'll have, offer you a pizza party. It, it needs to be established that it's okay to work multiple roles at the same time and stop making someone feel bad for doing so. so That's on yeah. the company's fault for not providing enough financially for it to be up to date. If, if inflation is going up, if things that we normally buy are going up, I only assume that you should be able to pay me a little bit more, more yeah. to make up for that. But then when you're like, oh, we just need you to work a little bit harder and put in some more hours in and stack up some more. Shut up. Shut up. Pay me more. Pay me. Yeah. Pay me more. I'll do it. I'm here if to you work. pay me more. I check in, I work, and I leave. We don't need to have Fridays and, 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 and Friday days we have to share a picture of something that we care about and whatnot. I am working. There, when I clock out, I am done. And I get... You know what, I, I, I usually say, oh, I get it, and I try to find both ways. No, with how things are now, just find a way. That is on you as the company. Find a way to incentivize working. Guys, whenever my, because um, obviously our parents are significantly older than us. When my parents worked, they had so much job security because jobs cared about their workers. They wanted them to stay. They wanted them to work their best. They gave them incentives. They took them out for dinners. They took them out for, they would have their meetings go out and y'all would do activities together. It's like, that's kind of like, now granted, that's not for everybody. Cause some people are like, no, like I don't want to do that and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's also like you get something out of it. You learn something new about the company. They give you more insight on what's, what's to come, you know? And it's like, my parents, they had longevity, like these jobs were jobs for theirs for 20, 30 years, okay? Mm -hmm. They had longevity, they had job security. If you, hey, if you came up, you showed up to work and you did what is needed of you, you will always be rewarded for that. They'll give you um, increases each year, you know, even though some of us get it, you know, a little bit, but it's not some 50 cents. Okay, granted, everything was a lot cheaper back then. It's not 50 cents they're getting. They're getting two, three dollar raises. And if you were exceptional yep. that year, guess what? You might even get five bucks extra. You know, and then plus also with being salary or being hourly, that's a big difference too. And there's not that many salary jobs, honestly, now. And I think that's why. Because salary, they're going to at least keep you for a year or two. Because it's like they want to make sure that that salary is, and then all them like insurance and stuff, they want to make sure they keep that afloat. They don't want to just keep getting rid of people. But jobs do not care for us anymore. And that's what sucks the most because you want to give your all. You want to be there for your coworkers. You want to be a good worker but it's like at what cost i have no life i'm not making enough for what i'm doing i'm spreading myself thin in these 8 10 or 12 hours and it's like at what cost for me to get like a cent or two extra exactly and then it's also like and everything is taxed we yeah. all know the tax season you can make you can make a five digit check four digits is coming out of it you know exactly. so it's just like it, it just sucks because like i said there's no like i said there is it's almost sad to say there's no reward anymore to working hard or exactly. being loyal like being loyal to a company means n dog shit they ain't loyal to it you, means let me, nothing yeah. they ain't loyal to you to, i'll tell you right now you drop we could drop dead right now we could drop dead right now guess guess what they're gonna guess what's gonna go on at, at our jobs oh my god zay and um zay, zay and chris have um they unfortunately passed away. Oh my God. Oh Let my God. Let everyone know so if terrible. they need a new position. We need a meeting real quick. Oh my goodness. I'm so sad. Um, immediately when that meeting ends, damn, we got to find somebody else. Okay. Put it back in the job market. Okay, great. Let's get a new role about two weeks later. Hey, this is, um, this is John and Sally. They're going to be taking over for Zay and Chris. Now they're going to be taking over everything that we need. Okay. Okay. Great. Cool. And life goes on. Oh guys. And also another thing too, with jobs, the training. Oh, me, me, my mom and sister and Zay, we all have different jobs. They're all different. Yeah. And 
they and they all are in different markets too and tell me why guys that people so you know how there's always like a customer service type um like department or like hr department things like that my customer service department does not know anything like i will transfer maybe some people over and i'll be like hey they just want to get their address updated oh okay all you hear is shuffling guys you hear them picking up and putting down their headset you hear tvs in the back they don't know how to do anything and the the fault that i have is not toward them they're not trained on what to do they're thrown in probably getting paid very little amount of money and they are hiring a lot of people overseas to do the same jobs we do here and paying them significantly less they are not trained they don't know what to do but it's like they have no clue of what to do they like it could be the simplest thing hey can you give me or hey do you know the number to um the because this is like the kind of like the the mitochondria the mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell yep powerhouse of um it's literally <laughs> them like they are like the resource they're, they're based like a resource center for anyone that needs it and it's like hey do you have the number for maybe claims department of some sort oh okay um hold on one who are you um okay it reintroduces yourself after that okay um who is this for it's like they have they are so lost and they have no clue of what they're doing and it's just like and this happened also with my mom and her position they are trying to have people do part of the job there's so many people like i said they just want it's like jobs now want to give you the littlest amount of money to and if you get paid even a cent over what the little like the people that get the little the um the littlest I don't know smallest yeah, yeah the smallest or the least yeah. it's like oh well we need you to do like 75 things in a day yeah and if you don't like you're you're falling behind yeah. and then it's like the people that get paid the smallest have no idea what they're doing and all they do is just transfer the like the people to you and it's like where is the training exactly. like that i guys no clue like imagine going to a hospital yeah this is like perfect scenario going to a hospital right and then you're, you're going to the er you're you say okay yeah you're going to the er you're literally having like say you're having a heart attack you're having a full-blown heart attack and someone who who is a nurse or a doctor doesn't even matter just someone who's supposed to be a licensed professional literally comes up to you and it's like oh okay um okay hang on one second comes back 15 minutes later okay what's going on imagine that you're having a full-blown heart attack and a doctor or a nurse is literally like, oh, okay, um, I'll be right back. You know, like, it's just like what you would expect people to know certain things. It's just, like I said, it's just everything. It's just, I just feel like everything now is just such a scam. Here's what I, cause we, we, we put a lot of negativity. So I want to put some, so I want to give you some positive light and insight into what's needed in this world. Um, first off is training. Training is very important. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be very open and honest with you guys. I do appreciate my own job's training regimen. To get the job that I got, it's not just a oh I applied and I got it. Chris knows I had to I had to jump through some hoops for it. I did, and I am I am grateful for the role that I have because it is rewarding for the amount of work that I put in. Even though they do ask a lot of unnecessary things on the personal end for me to kind of stand out and be different. Like I said, I'm here to clock in and clock out and make my check. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. So I do appreciate the training. If training should, you should always train people, no matter how experienced you are, you still have to have a great training program to make up for any of the small mistakes that could be made that could be a blemish on your company. You know you're a company and you know that it only takes a couple, it only takes a couple of employees to really mess it up to lose a whole big clientele. Yeah. That's all it takes. Oh, I'm not gonna work with them anymore because this one person was so rude to me on the phone. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to get back to me. We've dealt with that with some big companies of not just technology, training's important. The second thing is with this application process, when you are asking questions to people to distinguish who they are and what they do, ask them specific questions about how well they worked when they were working the jobs on the resume. One, it shows that you read my damn resume. Everyone needs to, to step the fuck up in this job industry. Mm -hmm. The people who run the websites, you need to step up and make 
better websites that engage people that that engage people more not to stay on there longer but to feel like they have a fighting chance for a job you know the people who are recruiters you need to step up do some more research with the with the interview with the interviews and the resumes so that you take your job more seriously when you're trying to find the right person for that role. We know you don't work, for, you work for the company, but you don't really work, work for the company because you're recruiting, you're the middle bridge, you're, you're the bridge in between, you know, of getting new people. You and should don't know make that you fault, want. And don't make false promises. If you're, if you're mm -hmm. like, hey, she's kind of, to me, I would have rather the lady who had like, the one I was just telling you guys about in terms of like she reached out to me and wanted me to interview for them and how she felt like I was a great fit. You don't know that because you're not the hiring managers and you can speak for them all you want. But at the end of the day, just be honest. Be like, hey, I'm doing this phone interview to see if you're a good fit for us. If you are, I'll let you know. Don't gap, don't literally hype me up and be like, oh yeah, we looked into your resume and we wanted to get to know you and we feel like you're going to be a great fit. And then all you do in the call is tell me about the job and then I don't hear from you. And then also be real enough to say we're looking at other candidates at this time. Why did I have to reach back out to you basically at the end of the week for you to tell me that? Don't do that. And also ban... I feel like now Zay had talked about it earlier interviews. I feel like that's the ultimate laziness. Whenever a recruiter reaches out to six or seven people or even up to eight people and they literally have you guys, they ask you guys each the same yeah, exact question interviews. that I hate those. I feel like that's the ultimate laziness. Instead of actually putting time slots for each person to do a regular mm -hmm. zoom interview, you're like, no, I'm going to just ask them all. And honestly, you're probably looking at everyone and saying, taking a screenshot of everyone saying who looks the best. That's already going to be one who looks the best here. Okay. I got it down to two or three people. Now I'm going to ask the same questions, waste everybody's time. You know, and then plus also, like I said, be mindful of people's time. Don't show up late. But then if I show up late, I'm already not a good candidate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, but it just, it does suck though, because like, even when you're trying to put your best foot forward, it's just like, it, it sometimes feels like there's no payoff. And I just wish people would take time to actually like, like I said, if you already know I'm not a good candidate, be upfront, tell me right away. That only saves me time to pursue other things. Why do, why do I have to reach back out to you when you were the one chasing me to do the exact, like to literally tell me, oh yeah, they're pursuing other people. But I would say in terms of businesses, don't feel bad for people like some social media people who are like, oh, you don't own a business. You want to still work for that job that you're not um, financially secure in. Totally understand the aspect of it. Because like I just said, we wonder why people don't want to go back to these nine to fives. We just clearly gave you so many outlines as to why you probably wouldn't. But I do also want to say that um, don't feel bad that you are not an entrepreneur or that you don't want to be doing or you don't want to have a business of your own because a lot of people really and they think on social media this person blew up so quickly and that was so easy for them and then they have this business <laughs> that is not the reality of it at all oh, and it's really sad to think that people think that things happen so quickly overnight um, some now granted some people are lucky enough to have a quick viral moment overnight but how long does that last you know but what I will say is that job it, you have to spend a lot of money to get a company off the ground whether it's something that you're making on your own whether that's something that you're just selling that other people make for you you have to pay those people you have to sell these things out you have to ship these things out there's so many things that you have to do on the back end that a lot of people i've just noticed from the younger generation does not really realize there's a lot to it and i know we love a lot of people love watching shark tank we're one of those people too but a lot of these things there's so many different aspects that go into it the di distribution things how you get it out to people how much it takes to get those people how often do you have to do it some people will say i didn't sleep for two weeks because or i slept for an hour for two weeks because i knew i had to do all this and i had to save as much money as i could to sell those things and to do these things for a company so it's not easy either way it's not easy to be an entrepreneur. It's not. It's not easy to be a nine to five person. It's not easy to literally be even a content creator. You have to edit. I understand also that too. And you are 
always ridiculed for anything that you do. That's something else that we don't think about that nine, but also nine to five people. If you're a fast food worker, we know that if you're in the service industry by any mm, means, mm, they're, they're, they mm. all have pros and cons and none of them are easy. So as much as people want to say, oh, why well, make 18K from this video alone? Okay, you make 18K right now. And yes, I might've made 18K in six months, but I'm gonna keep doing that. And is yours all there? And what do you spend it on? And too? why the hell are you, why the hell, what the hell do you gain out of making me feel, out of comparing it like that? Because it's a, it's a, that hierarchy. It's that I'm above you. I'm better than you. Ain't nobody this above capacity. anybody. Please understand. Nobody's a, we all go to the same place and we're, and we, we all bleed red. We all go to the same place and we done. Because no matter what you work, no matter how far you made it in life, no matter how many people accept and love and pay money maybe for you or for the business that you work for or the business that you represent, we all go to the ground at the end of the day. We all, that's just how it works. And once you realize that, life becomes a lot more easy to understand hey it's all up to you however far you want to go you can make it far if you are truly unhappy at your job whether it's a nine to five whether it's content creation whether it's entrepreneurship nobody is is hold nobody is holding you down that you have to keep doing that you can always leave and start and do something new but just know what you're leaving and know how much harder you have to work to get back up to where you want to go again but it's all up to you and like i said it's hard so stop comparing stop stop trying to make the whole i'm better than you because i make this much please keep a positive i know that this one was not you know we were kind of ranting a bit but please understand not only are we grateful for where we are and because we're we, grateful for where we will be exactly because i would say honestly we're you know how we are working wise we're in a better place than we were this time last year so that's definitely mm -hmm. different but whatever you want to do start where you need to go life is perspective and remember you know if you want to try and and be and be successful or do something great in this world maybe it's for you maybe it's for money maybe it's for your next generation of your of kids and family and whatnot you have to try and you have to work hard it sucks right but you have to but if you're unhappy with what you're doing don't sell out who you are to other to people who don't care about you you know if they care about you or not. Always just try to find a positive in everything. Like I said, I've been denied so many times, especially since I've been applying, guys, since the end of last year. Still have yet to find another position, another role. Have had multitude of interviews. Have been let down quite a few times. Been hyped up quite a few times. But I'm always just thinking, hey, he has something better for me lined up not everything's a setback and hey if this is their loss not mine as always guys make sure to like comment and subscribe thanks for tuning in with zay and chris this has been the can we talk conversation Bye. podcast video <laughs> peace out you guys